Do you feel you were born for more? Get ready to uncover your God-given purpose so you can impact the world with your gifts, your talents, and your story. Welcome to our Purpose Power Summit. I'm Amika Cooney, and today's guest is going to share how to make godly choices that will transform your life. Laura is the president of her family's foundation, Choose Joyce, the Sarah Gets Franklin Memorial Foundation. The foundation was set up in memory of her sister, Sarah Frankel, who passed away from a debilitating disease. Sarah's unforgettable message of joy, hope, and purpose lives on even after her death in her words through the book, Choose Joy, Finding Hope and Purpose When Life Hurts. Laura travels to do keynote speaking as well as speaking at conferences on the topics of Choose Joy and leadership lessons from a homebound girl. She conducts full and half-day conferences in Choose, Celebrate Your Ability to Choose. So welcome, Laura. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thanks well, for I, asking. I, yeah, well, I've been looking, at, kind of like stalking you online and found your information. I was like, oh, this is so awesome. You know, <laughs> I'm glad you found me. That means it yes, works. <laughs> exactly, right? And you've got a really awesome story, especially one coming from somebody who's experienced traumatic uh, a traumatic thing like grief. And I know you have a lot to share with our audience today, and we've got some great tips to really help those of you who are listening and watching, and you kind of feel stuck, and how do you get out of this really low place? So Laura's going to give us some really actionable tips. But before we do that, let's let's get a little bit of a backstory. Tell us how you got started and how you got to where you're doing now. Wonderful. Yes, um, you know, my family and I grew up in a small town in Iowa, and um, we grew up, there was uh, six of us children. I have three brothers and uh, two sisters, and the youngest sister was really the one who I would say transformed my life. So you always think as the oldest, you're going to be the one who is um, going to transform the lives of your siblings, and uh, really the opposite was true for for me at least. Um, when Sarah was traveling back and forth from college, um, and she went to college here in Iowa, she was involved in a rear end collision. And that collision is really what set my family and I and her, more importantly, her on a journey that she really never thought she would face. Um, after seven years of seeing doctors because of just being in so much pain after the uh, accident, and really, she had to expand her year of college even because uh, she couldn't sit through her classes and those kinds of things. Um, she was diagnosed with a disease called ankylosing spondylitis, um, AS for short. And what that disease is, is it's a form of arthritis that um, starts to fuse the joints in your uh, bones. And what they think happened is that she had a dormant gene that when the accident happened, it released that gene and really just spread throughout her body and quickly then at a very young age um, became homebound and um, unable to work from home. And so that really started her journey of what is my purpose? What is it that I can do in my life with um, this type of surroundings where even the last three years of her life, she was confined to her home because it's also an autoimmune disease. And so you can become allergic to things and she would become allergic to various foods. But more importantly, the last three of her years of her life, she became allergic to the air outside. So... Wow, that's scary. Like she, basically everything that you know as life, as you know it, is pretty much not conducive with making you feel good. Right. That's going to be awful. So, I mean, I can't imagine not just the physical pain, but the mental and emotional anguish that must have been for someone that young. And then also for you as the family, right? How did right. it make you feel seeing her going through that? Oh, it was terrible. You know, you feel so helpless in a lot of ways. And I think the hardest part is uh, appreciating what she wanted and yet wanting to help her in other ways. She wanted to remain as independent as she could for as long as she could because she was in her late twenties, early thirties, you know? Um, and yet she had a hard time doing anything by herself. And she was in a town where all of us as a family had to drive between two, three and four hours to get to her. And so even just the blessing of the um, friends that surrounded her in her hometown in Cedar Falls was just um, unbelievable. And the people that came to her to help her with things that uh, we weren't right next door to help with. 
So yes, it was, it was hard to not only see her go through it, but then not being there to be able to help her through it. Yeah. So Stephanie, it's, it's a very hard thing when you have a family member that you love that is suffering like that. Like um, two years ago, I lost my mom-in-law to cancer and she was also, by the time she had gone through chemo and radiation, she was wheelchair bound. She'd lost the use of her legs and it's just debilitating for them. And it's heartbreaking for us. But then we also have to learn to live on once they pass, right? Once they've passed and gone to, to be with the Lord, we're the ones who left grieving. They're happy and they're released from their pain. So which really brings us into what you're doing today. Now, you created the foundation. Well, your family created the foundation in her honor. And tell us a little bit about that and how the work that you're doing today. Okay. So when Sarah passed away, um, one of the last things that she said to me was, um, maybe just to step back a little bit so you understand why, um, since Sarah couldn't leave her home, she started a blog, basically, to make a life for herself. And the internet and social media and everything that we're doing here is so um, spot on to what she needed when she was in need because she couldn't leave her home. And so the blog that she created really told people about her journey and how even in the midst of the most horrible circumstances, you can choose joy. And so it really was a um, diary, if you will, of each day and what was going on. And it was God speaking through her that changed the lives of people all across the globe. We had people connecting with us from South Africa and Asia and all over. And in fact, we had to Skype her funeral because those individuals wanted so much to be a part of um, saying goodbye to someone that they really fell in love with and had never met before. And yet they felt like they had. And so after Sarah passed away, what she said to me, or before she passed away, she said to me was, I want people to continue learning and believing and trusting in God as she had tried to be a disciple to them. But one of the things she said to me was, I want people to know it's not about me. It's about him. That's really the message she wanted people to hear. So that's really where my journey then began with um, the foundation and trying to get her words put into a book so that people could continue to be blessed by not just her story, but in my, if you read the book, I think you can hear God speaking through her. So it's really God's words um, with Sarah as that disciple of putting it out there for people to um, really continue to believe and trust. And so we started up the foundation so that all of the proceeds from the book went to some place like the foundation where we can then give those dollars back in the form of grants to um, Christian organizations or health um, types of places to continue um, assisting and serving in the way that she did. Well, I love that how that even though she's not with us today, her legacy lives on, which is why I love books. I mean, if you have a book and you want to write and you know your message and your story it needs to be told, but we don't have to complicate things. What I love about it is that she just started blogging. She just started getting her, her feelings. And, and I think that vulnerability is really what connects people, us being able to share our ups and downs in our life. Because um, life is not perfect. It's not a highlight reel that we put on Facebook, right? You know, we right. deal with things and... Yeah, some days we have good days and some days we don't. But how would we, like if in Sarah's, what you've learned from what Sarah shares in her book and her blog, what are the life lessons that you, you could share with our audience today for somebody who's maybe feeling in that situation where they've lost their joy? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that a lot of it, and that's why Sarah said it's not about me, it's about him. Not, I think that sometimes we know we need to trust him, but it really is getting to that deep, part of our soul to really draw that line in the sand. She said one day she just drew a line in the sand and he said, choose me or choose fear, but one can't exist if the other is true. And so I think it's every day just realizing that with him, you can do it. And although the future is unknown and the past is behind us, we can only live today in the present. And it's like she said, too, she, she was still human. She had horrible days. And she kind of said, just take that day and be, be with it, you know, and cry and do whatever you need to do. But don't stay there. Um, 
And she did say that you need to do that because she kind of called it the pit of despair. You know, you have to get things out of the pit in order to be able to bring him into it. And so I think to remember that it's not about being perfect every single day. It's about letting those emotions out. That's why we have them. But remembering not to choose not to be a victim of the circumstance, but to rise above it. And with him, you can really do that. And it's just taking that one step at a time, one day at a time. So kind of it's, you know, it's, it's choice because everything we do in life is a choice, right? So we can either be victims or we can be victors. Like we, and I love that concept of drawing the line in the sand because I've had those moments in my life like, I say to him, I have a talk to myself, like you can have a little pity party, but no one else is coming because you're the only one there. No one else <laughs> wants to be wallowing in self-pity with you. But it's not to say that your feelings or your circumstances isn't validated. It is. But there comes a time where it's like, okay, time to put your good big girl panties on. What does God want me to do with my life? And, and realizing like I recently lost a, a close friend of mine as well, who literally within 48, we were, 48 hours, she, you know, we were skating on the ice. We were talking about kids and 48 hours she was gone. We just suddenly tragically in her forties and just makes you realize. Um, and I recently went to the funeral. I was like, okay, time is short. Like we really can't spend our time, you know, wallowing in self pity, being, you know, fearful of not taking chances Mm -hmm. and, you know, just taking that step. So I love that fact where you said that joy can't exist in the same place as fear. And that's Mm -hmm. where God says in his word, you know, perfect love casts out fear, which is, but again, we have to decide who we're going to, allow in right so what actionable tips could you give our audience like say for somebody who's feeling like that who's maybe kind of in the pit is stuck and says okay I know I know God you're there how do I get closer to making those steps and moving out of that situation you know I think that it's different for everybody because everybody is different in how they grieve or how they you know go through changes in their life but I would say one of a few things that worked for me was um, Sarah, when Sarah was writing, she uh, wrote then Encourage, which is a Division of Day Spring Cards and Gifts. She wrote a blog post for them once in a while. And um, within that group, she learned that sometimes each year, so we're kind of at the beginning of the year here, and we make New Year's resolutions, and then those New Year's resolutions go away if it's about losing weight or becoming healthy or whatever. And so one of the things that has helped me is to choose just one word for the year. And when you choose that one word, you also have to be diligent every day to be in the word which is his word, which is what directs us in our everyday life. Sometimes one of the things that we do is we get caught up in all the worldly things that are going on. And those worldly things, um, we start making decisions based on, and it gets all messed up because that's not what his word is what should drive us in our decisions. And so when you remain in the word or the devotions that you have each day, you would be amazed at how that one word you choose. For instance, the word I chose because I had lost my dad the year before I lost my sister was I needed to feel peace. It's like I just felt all torn up inside and I knew they were happy with God and they were joyful, but I'm sitting down here really missing them. Right. (laughs) So I needed peace. And it was amazing to me in all of the devotions I read or biblically what I dove into how you find peace. And he tells us that. And it was amazing how it just transformed the inside of who I was and just learned to trust that he knows what's best for each and every one of us. And I know that that sounds just kind of out there and maybe sometimes unrealistic, but eventually you get there. It's not an overnight thing and you have to be patient with yourself. But if you continue to choose to be above the point and really um, smile each day and go on, eventually that starts working for you. And if you stay in the word he tells you, and if you follow that path, that's really ultimately where you're going to find that joy. And it's really praying that he will come into your heart and create that in you. Exactly. So it's kind of like, it's a, it's a mindset shift as well. It's like, you're not going to feel joy yet. You can't wait to feel it to then decide I'm going to be joyful. You have to decide first and then it follows because our feelings and even in psychology, they talk about this as well, that your feelings are the last thing to catch up when you make a decision. So you kind of have to decide where you want to go. And I love that idea of staying in the word because 
it's like what I would call a, uh, saturating your soul because the more input you give yourself, if, if you're watching bad news and you're listening to, you know, oh, by myself kind of music, you're going to feel <laughs> terrible, but, you know, yeah. put, switch off that kind of sad music, put on some good joyful music. You know, like I love to dance. I love to skate, right. get my body moving and start to focus on other things that'll take your mind of what you, it doesn't mean you, you, you saying you're not denying what you're feeling, right? right. You're kind of like this relying on the Lord. And, and I love how you say it's also a process that we can't rush it because grief is a funny thing. It's one of those things that your, your body physically feels too. Um, like when my mom-in-law passed away and I'm sure you probably find this, there's just only so much you, you physically can do. You just have to allow your body to go through it. And that's when God's word becomes healing. Absolutely. You know, and I think about um, one of the things when Sarah was blogging, one of her friends asked her how she would define joy, not necessarily how the dictionary defined it, but how she defined joy. And so she wrote this definition of joy that said it's the unwavering trust that God knows what he's doing, despite what's happening in my life, right? So it's being appreciative of what's happening in my life and having that unwavering trust in him. And once that happens, then you will feel a joy inside that really can't be touched, you know? And so um, I just appreciate that her definition versus just the dictionary definition of what joy is, because I think it helps us know how to find that. Exactly. So it's kind of, you know, just really digging in and, and giving yourself that time to sort of work through that process and finding joy. And joy can be really just in the little things, like, because it's like flipping the script, right? If you keep focusing on the negative, yeah, what you focus on grows. So if you're focusing on the positive, and it's not like, I know this positive mind thinking thing has got a bad rap, but it's not that it's like, that's where God says, you know, um, you know, where your mind goes, your your heart follows. And it's super important that we, we really keep ourselves focused. And I also think, um, a big part of it is connecting with other people, wouldn't you say? Getting yes. friendships and relationships going. Right. Absolutely. It's. I was just going to say that. It's also who you surround yourself with. And I think that that's what I appreciate. I mean, here was a girl, my sister, who was confined to the three walls of her home. And in fact, um, she couldn't even really have visitors because it for a while there be around flu season, because if someone would just have, you know, an earache, she would get pneumonia. You know, I mean, it. that's how bad her um, autoimmune system was. But where she found that community was when she reached out through the internet, through the blogging world, she found a community of friends who really became her lifeline, but she also became theirs. And I think that when we surround ourselves with the positive people, not that we shouldn't help people that are going through a difficult time and help guide them, but you have to surround yourself with people that are going to encourage you and have fun with you and laugh with you and all of those um, kinds of things that bring us joy. And that's really what's going to help you get through it too, is just the community. And God tells us to live in community with people. We can't do this life alone. Exactly. And that's why I really, you know, believe in, as I said, online as well. And that's what's part of my passion about doing the summit is helping people connect the dots. Like, how do you connect there? And we do have a Facebook group as well. All the links will be below the video. But you got an awesome freebie gift that you're giving our audience today. Tell us a little bit about that, how that's going to help them take some next steps. Yes, if you download the worksheet um, that I have out there, it's really, um, it goes along with the book that we had published, um, which is Choose Joy, Finding Hope and Purpose When Life Hurts. But it allows you just with questions to really think about it, dig deep inside, get in the Bible with some of the verses that are there and just write down some of your thoughts and your um, feelings and really just continue to dig deep and within yourself on what is it that um, God is calling me to do? You know, I think the other thing is, you know, he's given each and every one of us different talents and gifts. And um, the reason he's done that is because that is what he needs us to do here. And um, if we don't use those, then we're really not doing his purpose and his and, and what he wants us to do. So it's really thought provoking questions to really try to help you find what is that purpose that Definitely. is for me. 
I think that's awesome because, you know, purpose can seem very ethereal and like, oh, that sounds great, but we want to really give you practical tips. And so make sure you go to mamikakuni.com and click on the summit tab. You'll be able to download the gifts that all of our speakers are offering. So you can really take action, go ahead and print them, do the exercises, and then give us your feedback. We'd love to hear if you have any aha moments, make sure, um, you know, to reach out to Laura, you know, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Yes. So through the foundation, we have a website www.choosejoyfoundation.com. And on that website, you will see all the different uh, things we're doing and the conferences we speak at. And it also then has the contact information, which is really just choosejoyfoundation at gmail.com. That's awesome. We'll definitely go ahead and make sure to reach out to Laura and tell her you saw her on the Summit Series. We would really love to hear how you've you've benefited from today's content. And if you haven't yet done so, please go ahead and share it. I'm sure you know somebody who who would really benefit and would love to hear about what Laura has to say today. So go ahead and click the button now and share with your friends and, um, you know, make sure to reach out to Laura online and create the connection. And also, you know, we have a Facebook group too. You go to mitmikakuni.com and you'll get all the links there. So you can connect with our speakers. You can connect with our, our audience and create the conversation, right? Because that's really what it is. It's starting the conversation, you know, really pulling ourselves out of, out of that and just creating community, which is what I love. So I'm going to say thank you so much, Laura, for being with me here today and sharing with our audience your wonderful story and the excellent work that you're doing in Sarah's honor. And I'm just so awesomely excited to be able to get this out there because I know there's lots of people listening today who really would benefit. But So thanks so much for that. Well, thanks for blessing me to be a part of it. Well, thanks, everyone, everyone. And make sure to keep in touch and uh, reach out to our, our speakers. They'd love to hear from you. Until the next one, take care. If you want more free resources that we only share with our newsletter community, go to bamikakuni.com and sign up today. We have great resources like ebooks, inspirational screensavers, printables, and exclusive access to our community.